Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Camilla. I'm a trainee solicitor at a law firm in London. And on this channel, I talk about things related to personal development, personal finance, and law careers. Today's video is all about the Watson Glazer test. This is something that I had to do on numerous occasions when I was making applications for law firms, because a lot of law firms use the Watson Glazer test as part of their application process. Now, a lot of people that I've spoken to don't like the Watson Glazer test. They hate it. But actually, I really like it. I actually really enjoy taking the test and I know that sounds probably a bit weird but it's because I'm good at it and not to be big-headed but I'm good at it because I practiced a lot so ev every time that I did an application where there was a Watson Glazer test involved I was pretty confident that I would be one of the top scoring um, people that, that took the Watson Glazer test. And the way that I know that is because I asked for my results after each time I did a Watson Glazer test, and these are the results that I had. I scored in the 93rd percentile for Linklater's test. I scored in the 88th percentile for Hogan Lovell's uh, test and the 93rd percentile for bird and birds test. I'll have to maybe put a cut out and explain what percentile means, but essentially it means I did really, really well. So um, I'm gonna share with you in this video how I did well, and hopefully the next time you take a Watson Glazer test, you'll be really excited to take it just like I was. So for those of you who don't actually know what the Watson Glazer test is because you've never taken one before, it's a critical thinking test which is popular um, which is a popular assessment tool used by many employers to evaluate um, candidates' critical thinking skills. And for many firms, it acts as a gateway between you and the interview. So imagine you spend hours, if not days, if not weeks, crafting the perfect application. You submit it, and then you get an invite for the Watson Glazer test. And if you don't pass that test, then your beautifully crafted application might not even get read by anybody. So it is very frustrating if you write an amazing application and no one ever reads it because you don't pass the test. This can put some people off from actually applying to firms that have the Watson Glazer test as part of the application process. I personally would never self-select myself out of something. So even if I didn't think I was good at a test, I would do everything within my power to get the skills that I need to pass the test. And can you get better at the Watson Glazer test? Yes, you definitely can. Well, from my experience anyway, the first time that I took Linklater's Watson Glazer test, I scored in the 65th percentile. The second time I took it, I scored in the 93rd percentile, which was around a year later. And that's because I practiced a lot in between. Based on my own experience, I believe that you can improve your score. And if I can do it, then I'm pretty sure you can do it. Now, I do know that the Watson Glazer test isn't the most inclusive tool um, for everybody. And I know that if, for example, you need extra time, then you really need to be asking for extra time because it's very very time pressured test. That's, I suppose, a topic for a different video. But in this video, I'm going to share with you my top five tips for passing the Watson Glazer test. Number one, familiarize yourself with the test and the content. The Watson Glazer test consists of multiple choice questions that assess your ability to analyze, evaluate, and draw conclusions um, from complex information. The test is timed, so it's really important to understand the format of the test and to understand what each section is asking you to do because there are several different sections and they all kind of require you to think quite differently when it comes to answering the questions. So the best thing to do is practice, practice, practice. So I got a, um, there's a number of different resources that you can use online to help you with this. So there are websites such as Job Test Prep, which um, I had a membership to, you do have to pay for it. So it isn't great that, you, that it's a paid resource. Yeah, I can't remember how much it cost, but I signed up to that and I practiced a lot. Um, so yeah, you just essentially practice the multiple choice questions and then you get some feedback at the end. You can either choose to get the feedback at the end of the doing the whole test or question by question. I'm pretty sure I did it question by question mostly just so that I could get that instant feedback to find out what I was doing right, what I was doing wrong. Um, and I would say that the job test prep and um, 
assessmentday.com tests they're not quite the same as the real Watson Glaser tests but they really do help train your mind to think critically which is essentially what you need to be doing practice that a lot and um, there are other websites that have Watson Glaser tests and some of those are a bit more representative of the real test or the ones that I've seen anyway and um, websites such as Clifford Chance they've got a practice one which is really good the bar standards board so you have to do the, if you want to be a barrister and you want to do the bar course, you've got to do what's called the BCAT. And the BCAT is basically just a Watson Glaser test. So if you go on the BCAT website, I think they, they've got a practice test for free as well. If you're a member of Rare Recruitment, they also are able to send you um, practice Watson Glaser tests, which are really helpful. And yeah, just have a Google to see if there are any other Watson Glaser tests that you can do for free. Um, I know that they don't, the Clifford Chance one and the BCAT one, you don't actually get your answers back, but you can see what your score is. And if you just keep doing it over and over again to try and improve your score, then you will, you'll be sort of developing the, the skills that you need to do well in the actual test. So number two, practice your critical thinking skills. So one way you can do that is what I've just said, practice lots of tests, but also reading articles and analyzing arguments and practice drawing conclusions from sources of information. That just practice your critical thinking skills that can really help and there's also a book i will put a, a cut out of it here and a link to it in the description box of the video um it's really really helpful for uh, learning how to um think critically and, and what each section of the test is asking for um so yeah i definitely recommend picking up that book it's really really good and with that book you can also use it during the actual test if you get stuck on a question then sometimes i would just quickly open the book and think okay based on what the book is saying what do I think the correct answer is and that's probably saved me quite a few times that book so I definitely recommend that one number three my third tip is to focus on accuracy so I suppose it goes without saying but it has to be said you need to read the question very carefully it's so tempting to just kind of glaze your eyes over it because the, you know you can see the clock sort of counting down in the corner so you feel like you've got no time and you uh, it's so tempting just to quickly rush through the questions spend time reading each question and each answer carefully so that you maximize your chances of actually understanding what the question is asking you that will improve your chances of getting it right. Number four managing your time as I've previously said it's a very time intensive test and so practicing will help you to become quicker but also you need to keep an eye on the clock and make sure that you're not spending too long on each question because the worst thing you can do is not finish the test um, even if you get to say you've got a couple of minutes left and you're you still got 10 questions left I would set aside some time to obviously try and get as many as you can right but if you're really stuck just pick one of the answers and move on and just keep clicking until you get to the end and make sure you've got an answer down for each of the questions even if you're guessing them um, you've still got more of a chance of passing the test or getting a higher mark than if you just left the questions blank so um, yeah definitely manage your time and make sure you put down something for each each question number five be confident so the Watson Glaser test is one of those tests that can get you questioning your own ability to think it's um, it's definitely an interesting test and I found myself second guessing myself and overthinking the answers so so many times it's so common to do that but be confident if you're sure that the answer is correct then you're probably right and well hopefully if you've practiced then your instincts will probably lead you to the right answer and um, try not to overthink it too much because if you overthink it then I think that can increase your chances of going wrong um, so yeah, just be confident and best of luck if you've got a Watson Glazer test coming up soon. Please let me know if you've got any questions in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, then I think that you'll also like this video here. So give this one a click and I'll see you over there. Um, and until next time, goodbye.